Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today's lesson will be on the instrument, the claves. Claves are used in all kinds of music. Orchestral music, theater shows, studio recording, pop, jazz, and obviously Latin music. So you see on this table I have several sets of different kinds of claves. Everybody knows what claves look like. They're basically just two pieces of wood, roughly about one inch in diameter. They can be thicker or thinner, as you'll see here. And the way you play claves traditionally is this. So you see the grip there. I'm creating a cup with my hand and putting the clave in. You can extend that cup higher or lower. Now, the sound of the claves is mostly uh, registered by the hitting instrument. So you'll see as I change the hitter, the striker, which is in my right hand, if you're a righty, that the sound will change. We'll keep the same hit E, in other words, the instrument you strike. Here's another one. And another. And another. Different, right? It's pretty, pretty interesting. So let's fish around on the instrument to see if we can get some different sounds. If I keep the same grip, or cup grip, we'll call it, let's play at the top. And let's play in the middle. Slightly different. Now what about if I grip the clave like this and play it at the top? And middle. So they're not much sound, but the top doesn't sound bad. So the point of all this is to show you that you need to fish around with different claves, different instruments to get the best sound. This is why I have several different kinds of rosewood claves, all these, all right? And these are bloodwood, which I made. These are mini claves. Now, I mainly use these for recording. They sound great when they're close mic'd. Now, these are very, very loud. These are my favorite claves right here. So you see when I move forward with the clave, in other words, right around there, a third of the way up, all of a sudden the sound gets a lot beefier. As opposed to this. And if we reverse them, pretty much the same thing. Now, if we try that with these, here's the tip. As I move up, it dries out a bit. So the point of, of this, uh, once again, is to get you to experiment with several different sets, if possible. Uh, of, of claves. They don't have to look the same, they just need to sound good. So if we're playing a Copeland piece like we just did Appalachian Spring before the whole season was canceled because this pandemic, uh, the claves I used were these because they're really great. They cut through, you know. All right, so in that ballet, there's a lot of kind of big clave solos, believe it or not. And these really, really, really cut through. So they're, they're, it's a great instrument. So when you buy a set, I would suggest getting the hardest wood possible. Rosewood is great. Uh, nothing softer, though. Grenadilla, Teak, even Bubinga, uh, those are ones that I've made. They sound really good as well. Here's a clave block that I made. And it's basically just a hollowed out piece of wood. It's kind of like a children's toy, but it sounds good.
almost like some little wood blocks. And here's a set of claves I got in Cameroon that I really like. Oops. If I switch them, So these sound different no matter where you play them, all up and down. So again, if you're doing some recording, find the sweet spot and stay with it. Now, also you can mount a clave. So you see there, I just took a temple block mount that I showed everybody in the um, temple block videos. I put some cabinet cushions. So I build cabinets too, and when I make those, when I'm done on the doors, I put these little rubber cushions. Hopefully you can see those. And I did that to suspend the clave in the mount. And then you can play it with another clave. So that's really handy. So that means you have a hand free. If this is in a cymbal stand, you just, um, you know, on any kind of stand, you pick it up, play with another clave, and you're good to go. Now, not exactly the same as playing it cupped, but it's similar and will get you out of a bind. Now, also, if you're feeling adventurous, you can mount this on a pedal like this and then have your bass drum play it with some sort of, um, well, I'll tell you, uh, a little disappointed because I have a clave beater that I made with a piece of metal. I took apart a bass drum beater and then took some gen weld and put, which is glue, and then I put, uh, drilled a hole and drove the rod from the bass drum right into a clave without cracking it, obviously. And then I put that on a bass drum pedal and it sounds just like Very similar to a clave, which I would play with one of my feet, but I don't have that here today because we're locked out of the college right now. So, but that's how you can do it. So you can, if you have an old bass drum beater, take off the top, which is easy to do, and then drill a hole. Normally it's going to be um, maybe a quarter inch hole uh, for the rod. You want it to fit tight, turn over the clave, put that rod in there and then drive it in. Not too hard, you'll crack the clave. Drive it in so it's nice and tight and put some glue in there before you do that. It never comes off and it, it'll last a long time. The only bad thing is it's not as loud as using a wood block on your foot. So it's not gonna be very loud, but it's the real sound. So uh, that's something you all can try at home. It's a little project, but it really does work. Okay, finally, we have this thing. This is really kind of a wood block, but I use it for clave sometimes, so. And the same thing, you could, I have one of these that's mounted as well. And it's, it's a nice sound, it's a real woody kind of sound. All right, so to recap, what you really only need is one set of claves that sound good. But if you can't, in other words, audition them in person, if you're ordering them online, and these things are cheap, you know, you can get them on, used on Reverb or eBay or anywhere, really, probably on Amazon. Uh, buy two or three sets, all right, and match them up and see what sounds best. So, you know, you'd go through, let's see here, see? How different that is. There's good. There's a good one. See? All right, let's try this. Not so great. Better. How about this? So my favorite was this. All right, so that's how you do it. Because you get a set, they might not sound great, but you can you can match these up. Now, companies that make these, there's a lot. Uh, LP makes them, uh, Meinl makes them, 
Uh, I think Pearl makes them. You can also get a synthetic set. I've tried those. I don't like them. The hardest wood possible. So if you look on a Janka scale, that's how they measure wood hardness. You can, you know, go up the line. Rosewood's a hard wood, uh, much harder than oak and all that. But up on top of that are the really hard woods, like bloodwood, the teak family. Uh, most of that, as rosewood is a member, uh, can get pretty hard, all right? Um, also, Bacote works really well, the Brazilian hardwood. Grenadilla works well. Um, and the only other one I could recommend trying would be Bubinga, which is expensive. That works really well. So I hope this helps, uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.